Hey you guys, this is Mr. Sal. We're going to look at the definition of congruence and some basic properties. So thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Alright, here's the objectives for the next lesson. Lesson 11. Take a moment and write these three down. All right, I know the definition of congruence and related notation is the symbol. So we don't really write the word congruent very often anymore. We just use the symbol in its place. I know that to prove two figures are congruent, there must be a sequence of rigid motions that maps one figure onto the other. I know that the basic properties of congruence are similar to the properties for all three rigid motions, translations, rotations, and reflections. So these three at the bottom are all three rigid motions which means that these will always be and always give us congruent shapes. That's not very good congruent, but uh, we're good. Describe the sequence of basic rigid motions that shows shape one is congruent to shape two. So we're just looking at this one and this one right here. Okay, so here's what I would do is I would see that I could trace this right here. And uh, if I just move the corners so that they coincide, that's a translation first. Then I would rotate this thing. So let's see if this will work. And I'm going to rotate it so that the lines coincide as well. And then I would have to flip this thing so that it's uh, corresponding with the shape overall. So that's a translation, a rotation, then a reflection for me. And now we have the reflection which does show shape two. And so since we use only rigid motions, we know that it's uh, congruent. All right, now we're gonna show that Shape 2 is congruent to shape 3. So the first thing I'm going to do is show that if I were to translate this thing along this line uh, so that the corner parts were corresponding, then I'm going to translate it along this vector. So if I trace shape 2, all right, that'll do. Then what I'm going to do is take this shape and then I'm going to slide it, that corner part, just along that vector like this. And then I'm going to rotate it. All right, let's see if it'll work. Oh, no, that didn't work. Let's try again. There we go. I'm trying to keep it on that center of rotation the best I can, but whatever. All right, and that'll do it. So by using those two rigid motions, I know that the two shapes are congruent. This one was a translation, then a rotation. All right, this part we're going to show that shape one is congruent to shape two. So once again, I'm going to translate shape one along this vector so that the corner parts correspond with each other. So I will also trace shape one. All right, so I'm going to take this and I'm going to translate it along that vector till the corners correspond with each other. Then I'll rotate this thing. All right, so now I have that point and the lines that correspond, all I need to do is reflect this thing. And there we go. We see that uh, shape one now is congruent to shape three because all we did was use rigid motions to uh, transform it onto the other shape. Alright, for this one, 
We're going to translate that shape along the vector AB, then we're going to rotate it around O. We get to choose how far we want to rotate it. And then we'll answer that question, is the pre-image congruent to the image? Let's find out. All right, so the first thing I'm going to do is trace his shape. All right. Then uh, for this, just doing it on the iPad, right, I'm going to, I can see that this purple line represents the vector, which now I will translate that triangle on. Just the X. You could do it with all three parts, though. So that is the translation. Now we need to, ro to rotate it around point O. Right, and we get to choose where we want to rotate it to. Maybe up here, maybe down there. Whatever, let's see if we can fix that part. Yeah, so I guess I can just rotate it like that. The book rotated a little bit more. That's okay, too. So since it was a rigid motions that we used, automatically the two shapes are congruent. Given that sequences enjoy the same basic properties of basic rigid motions, we can state three basic properties of congruencies. Congruence one, a congruence maps a line to a line, array to array, a segment to a segment, and an angle to an angle. Congruence two, a congruence preserves lengths of segments. Congruence three, a congruence preserves measures of angles. The notation for congruence is congruence. All right, so we have this problem set. Given these two triangles with lengths shown below, is there one basic rigid motion that maps one to the other? Yes, this one, um, we can see if we took this length right here and rotated it, we would get this, this one. But also with this, this red line as well. And then the angles would correspond with each other as well. So this is why we know that these two would be congruent is because we could use one rotation to map one to the other. Are there two right are the two right triangles shown below congruent? And so describe a congruence that would map one triangle onto the other. We just did that. Since we know that it's a rigid motion that's a rotation, um, we know that these two triangles are congruent. All right, here we have these two rays, OA and O prime A prime. Describe a congruence that maps OA to O prime A prime. So I'm going to copy OA ray, or trace it like that. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to show the ray that's going to take me uh, the translation of OA down into, so that the O's correspond, like this. Then all i got to do is rotate it. Once I get this thing rotated, this angle, then it will correspond with O prime A prime. So again, since it's just rigid motions that we use, we know that the two are congruent. Same with this one, except for it's backwards now. So I'm going to trace O prime A prime, like this. And I can see I'm going to translate it along, along this red vector. So that moves it up this way. And from there it's going to be a rotation around this way onto OA.